Remember this? Luckily, figures are way better nowadays. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I love finding affordable ways to DIY a variety of things. Money can't buy everything, except maybe figures. I love collecting figures and recreating iconic scenes. Every figure deserves to shine on my display. So every week I ask myself the same question, and answer it by creating something I'm proud of. Join my weekly adventure by subscribing to my channel. Leave your feedback and suggestions down below. I often get inspired by your comments, and I hope I can inspire you too. Last week, I did some minor touch-ups to my Taskmaster figure, making it pop a bit more. And that figure turned out pretty cool. Check that video out if you haven't already. I can't do Taskmaster and not do Black Widow. Ah, wait. Everything is overexposed. Let me try again. That's better. Today, I want to work on a Black Widow figure from the movie. And if you're wondering why I'm doing the snowsuit version instead of the one in the finale, it's because I got this figure way before the movie came out. And I usually only get one outfit per movie. So I went with the one that looked better to me. And this one came with the display stand and explosion effect pieces. I actually used this display stand in my very first Marvel Legends video. My Wanda video. However, I quickly learned that I actually don't enjoy using them because I find them distracting even though they're made out of clear plastic. Another reason why I got the white version is because I already have two Black Widows that are very similar. The Winter Soldier one and the one from Infinity War or Endgame. They all look very similar, so I didn't want to get another one with the black suit. This figure looks pretty awesome, but it doesn't mean there's nothing to improve. So. Let's, Let's deconstruct, deconstruct this, this figure. figure. The thing I don't love about this figure is how clean and white it looks. It's not a bad look, but all the molded details are barely visible. When looking at reference photos, you can see that Natasha's outfit has various shades of grey on it. It's a nice way to keep the design clean while keeping the superhero aesthetic to it. So I'm going to add shades of grey onto the suit to bring out the details. Another thing I often do to my figures is painting the shoes darker. In battle, these characters are constantly kicking, running, and jumping off cliffs. Their shoes shouldn't be in pristine condition. And lastly, I want to challenge myself again to fix the red hair. I've had a few tries with my other Black Widow figure and my Scarlet Witch figure. They were alright, but I think I can do a better job this time. That's my analysis. Let's see if I can make this Black Widow figure even better. So, can I make it? Hey, you can now support me on Patreon. Here's what you get when you become a member on Patreon. Detailed breakdowns of the paint and techniques I used in my videos. Digital trading cards. And here's the coolest one. Every month, I'll personally mail you a mini 3D poster that you can fold and glue yourself. These rewards are designed by me using the photos I took for each figure. I love making things, and this is my way to thank my supporters. And it's totally fine if you don't join, because my YouTube content will not be affected. I appreciate your support either way. First, I'm adding the light gray onto the Y-shaped area on her torso. I mixed this color off screen, but it's pretty much just white with the tiniest amount of black mixed in it. You can't really see the color on screen, and that's good. Because acrylic paint dries slightly darker, so in a few minutes, the grey should be more obvious. My intention is to add more dimension and details to the suit, and not make it too distracting. It's a tough balance, but I have more control this way. If it's too light, I can always darken it by adding more layers. It's really difficult to see on camera here, but there are these molded lines all over the figure. I'm painting the same grey into areas that should be darker. Think of this as shading. Normally, it's darker on the underside or inner parts of objects, or areas that are more banged up. So these are the areas I'm focusing on. I'm going to emphasize the boots even more. So I'm using a slightly darker grey on the soles and around the boot straps.
I also filled in the lines around the waist with this color too. And finally, I'm also adding this darker gray onto the shoulder and elbow pads, so they stand out more against the suit, making them look like they're made out of different materials. Look, the suit no longer looks pure white, but the details are still muddy. Mm. So I'm gonna brush some silver paint onto the molded lines to define the different colors a bit more and making the lines pop on the outfit. I also applied some silver onto her gauntlets and various areas on her belt. These are meant to be very subtle, bringing the whole suit together. Alright, time to work on the head. This head's very good. I can totally see Scarlett Johansson here. Unfortunately, the hair isn't screen accurate, but I think they did this to maximize the posability, so I don't mind it that much. Before I fix the hair, I want to adjust her skin tone a bit. Black Widow always looks different. Sometimes she's more tan, and other times she's pretty pale. When she had the white suit on in the movie, she was in a snowy area, and her face reflected that too. She was paler than usual, and her cheeks were red due to the cold. I want mine to give off that look too, so I'm dabbing a bit of red onto her cheeks with a damp brush. Next, I'm gonna make her brows more brown than black, so they match her hair. And speaking of hair, I first applied a wash of orange, and I realized it didn't look right. So then I applied some red here and there, and that also didn't look right. My solution is to apply more orange and red until they look natural. Let's hope this works this time. Alright, here's the finished head. The hair turned out great. I think this is the best red hair I've done so far. It's definitely better than the original version. This may be my favorite Black Widow face now too. What do you think? And here's the finished figure. It's just night and day. The before version looks incomplete now. The finished suit still looks white, but you can easily see all the details on it. It just looks more natural now, and the hair looks amazing with the suit. And let's have a closer look. Wow, let's just admire how pretty Scarlett Johansson is. The silver lines helped a lot. They add so much more definition to the costume. Okay, this figure has been put away in the box for over two years because I had other Black Widow figures that I liked more, and I didn't really know how to make this one better until now. Taskmaster and this Black Widow figure are underrated in my opinion. Both figures are solid and are easy to pose. They're easy to balance and come with a handful of accessories. There are so much posing possibilities for both figures. And this Black Widow figure even comes with a display stand and various explosive effects. Okay, I didn't use those for Black Widow but I'll keep them and maybe I'll use them in the future for other dioramas. I'm so glad I didn't give up on this figure. This isn't my favorite MCU Black Widow, but it may be my favorite Black Widow figure now. The white suit makes her stand out against all the other figures, and I just love how easy it is to pose her. The non-screen accurate hair doesn't bother me at all because I can turn her head whichever direction I want without her hair getting in the way. And I also feel I'm more confident in my painting skills now. I know I make it look so easy in my videos, but I don't always know if I'm using the right colors or techniques. I try to use what I've learned previously and improve upon it. And I think this video is a good example of that. I trusted my instinct and it turned out great. Sometimes figures may look better in person, in videos or in photos, but this Black Widow figure looks great in all mediums. I was nervous that the white will still be washed out, or I had to exaggerate the gray for it to show. Turns out, this isn't an issue at all. I just love how these photos look. This figure doesn't have the best range of motion due to the shoulder pads and the straps on her legs, but I'm still able to pull off natural looking poses. 
Sometimes female figures are very awkward to pose because the proportions can sometimes look cartoonish. And I'm not having this issue at all here. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Let me know down below. You can also support me on Patreon. There will be multiple tiers so you can support me however you want. The link is in the description box below. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I have more Marvel Legends content coming soon. Stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.